Alrighty, so Renaissance era composers. These are individuals who created and published music from the 14th century to the 17th century. Now this music is a little bit different than what we're used to. It tends to be a bit more sorrowful, a bit more reflecting inwards as it typically was for religious events. It also was typically more of vocalization as the piano was not actually invented yet, but there was the clavichord, which is basically a precursor or an ancestor to the piano, which came about in the 14th century, right at the beginning of the Renaissance era. So we're going to take a look at four composers, the first being Josquin de Perez. He was a French composer. And he was considered a musical magician mathematician, which is kind of fun to say. So go ahead and try saying that. Musical magician mathematician. <laughs> um, essentially, he was very particular with how he wrote his music and liked to make things sound as if they were entirely different than what was written on the paper. So this brought about melodic imitation, which is the layering of voices at different intervals. Essentially, it's being able to use... Um, for example, on the piano, two hands doing two different things, but they're complementary to each other. So here is one of his most famous compositions. We're just going to listen to a little snippet of it. Again, it is different than what we're used to, but let's just try it out. Okay, so that is Jusque, or Jusquin, sorry, <laughs> de Perez. Now we're going to take a look at Madalena Casolana. She is from Venice, Italy, which is the city within, of course, Italy, where you everything is on boat. So you get to and from where you're going on a boat instead of typically by a car. Um, and now she was actually the very first woman recorded to ever have published her own compositions, meaning she went to the publisher and had them publish on her own. They were under her name. Um, there wasn't having to use anybody else to get around the system. So kind of really neat. Um, she enjoyed composing, singing, playing, teaching, especially teaching. She really loved working with other composers, um, especially individuals from about the, the six or seven um, up to 16 range. Um, so, yeah, so she did a lot with that. She also attend, um, sang a lot of chorales, although she didn't particularly enjoy the chorales as much as she enjoyed singing um, solo. So here is one of her most famous compositions. So that one was Madalena Castellana. Um, again, a little bit different than what we're used to. Hers tended to be a bit more cheerful um, than with our last composer. But here is our third one, William Byrd. He is the most famous from the Renaissance era. He's from England, and he really loved to play the organ. Um, the organ is a little bit different from the piano because you're not only playing with your fingers, you're playing with your feet. Everything is moving around. There's different layers going on with with their right hand as well, and sometimes your left hand on the organ. So he is considered a father of music, especially when it comes to the piano and keyboard area, because he really pushed to not just have singers, but to also have the accompaniments with them. He liked to write music for what was considered ordinary and the proper. Um, so this means, so proper would be like individuals that lived in castles, the royalty, the fancy, you know, people, especially back then who wore like the really, really, um, beautiful clothing that um, lived exuberant lifestyles. Ordinary would be um, people that would be the farmers or that would be creating the clothes or something like that. Um, so he just really wanted to make sure that everyone had the opportunity to enjoy music, whether you are wealthy or not. So here's one of his most famous compositions.
still fairly different than what we're used to, but his were even more so than our last two composers, even more so, a bit more upbeat, more, well, maybe not upbeat, because they are never fast, um, but more hopeful, more exciting, more enticing, and more intriguing for the listener um, than the earlier ones from the Renaissance area. So that was William Byrd. Our last composer we're going to take a look at today is Vittoria Eliotti. She's also from Italy, um, and she started playing the harpsichord at age four or five. Um, so similar age as many of you started when you played the piano fairly young, when your hands are still working on growing, all of those things. Um, but her father actually had her compositions printed for her because as she was a woman and was a nun at the time, um, she wasn't allowed to do that. So that has a change now, obviously, in recent years. Um, but she was the first known woman to have religious music in print. Now, we say first known because there likely was other women who had it in print, but they went by um, a different name, a suedo name, um, or just went by anonymous. Um, a lot of composers um, since the Renaissance era and even in the Renaissance era did dedicate music to her because she had such a profound impact. She dedicated all of her studies, all of her life to creating um, music specifically for the Catholic Church and those services. Um, but she also, similar to William Byrd, wanted to make it accessible to both um, those who were wealthy and those who were not. So here is one of her most famous compositions. <laughs> Alrighty, so that one was Vittoria Eliotti. Now, you do have a few assignments for this first lesson. Using the chat box in Musi, so you'll log into Musi just like when we have normal classes, but instead of, of course, opening class, you'll click on chat, you or your parent, um, and then you're going to tell me three different things. Make sure you put it in the chat box so we can talk about it in class next week. Number one, two things you learned about any of the composers. It can be any of those four. Number two is which composer did you enjoy the music of the most and why? It can be anything. Maybe you liked how it sounded. Maybe it just kind of made you feel a little bit more happy. Maybe it made you think about something. Maybe, you know, it made you think of the rain, whatever it is. Um, and which composer's piece it was. And then the third thing you'll let me know inside that chat box is why you think it's important that we're aware of this kind of music. Knowing that it's super different <laughs> than what we're used to listening to. Um, so three assignments, again, put them in the chat box in Musi. If you have any issues finding it, feel free to have your parents shoot me a message. So that way we can get it all sorted out. Um, yeah, we'll see you in the next lesson.